You can explain to me how allowing millions of people from places unknown, from countries unknown, who don't speak languages. We have languages coming into our country. We have nobody that even speaks those languages. They're, they're truly foreign languages. Nobody speaks them. Are, are you hearing the languages now, Donald Trump? Are the, are the voices near you? Can you not understand what they're saying? Look, the guy is utterly falling apart. Uh, I will grant you that migrants coming to the United States don't necessarily speak English. But I will also grant you that their languages that they're speaking. And I'm pretty sure in our country of more than 300 million people, there's at least one other person who speaks them too. But look, Donald Trump is not gonna let the fact that his brain is rotting in his skull stop him from spreading xenophobia, fear, and hatred towards migrants. That's after all why he went to the border in the first place. And so while Joe Biden is there calling him out and saying, you know, let's let's work together, let's put politics aside, let's pass the Republican border security bill that you blocked. Instead, Donald Trump is demonizing migrants in many of the same terms you've probably heard before, saying they're coming from jails and they're coming from prisons and they're coming from mental institutions and they're coming from insane asylums and they're terrorists and they're being led into our country and it's horrible. I think he honestly just like goes to sleep, has the night sweats, has a nightmare and wakes up and just tells us what he saw because it's not reflective of what's actually going on in the border. but. This is what he wants to have you believe. There was thankfully some instantaneous fact checking during this speech, including from CNN fact checker Daniel Dale. Take a look at this. He told the story that he's told before, Caitlin, about people arriving speaking languages that no one's ever heard. He said in a previous recent speech, uh, we didn't even have one translator who could understand this language. This, I've looked into this, seems to be just conjured out of thin air. It's nonsense. No, look, Daniel, he's a professional, okay? And I like that he's gonna look into all this stuff. That one you don't need to look into, okay? That is yeah. just obviously nonsense. I don't think you needed to check that fact. We might have millions of people watching this show, but you can be the difference maker because we just need 1% of our audience to be paid members. And then this show can be around forever. So you can make that difference. Click join now. We we're gonna have more from Donald Trump. Uh, Sharon, I wanna start with you. The languages thing, the terrorists, what are we supposed to do? He wants this to be like the issue of the election, but through this lens, what do you make of that? Um, at this point, I don't know how closely I, I and others can even pay attention to it. You want to talk about somebody who doesn't speak English, okay? But we <laughs> got along just fine deciphering what Donald Trump was trying to get at in all caps with the exclamation marks, okay? He just is, well, I'll say again, all over the place. And this speech on Rewind, I think you're right about the night sweats and this thing where, or maybe he's playing it. Maybe he has something, he sleeps with these headphones on and he programs himself to just spit it out again and again. But it's not perfect yet, so I don't know if that's what he's doing. I don't know what to say, okay? He makes it up as he goes along and nobody says, dude, get some rest. Can we yeah. give you something for that? Can we? You know, nobody does that. He needs the biggest intervention ever. And it starts with a group of football players tackling him. And tucking him away somewhere for emergency treatment. That's a, too that, much. I've never heard that theory before, but you know what? Maybe we can set something up. I mean, I hear that presidents have absolute immunity to do whatever they want to their rivals. So, in theory, Biden could talk to Taylor and get the chiefs to go and tackle him. I mean, it's it's totally yeah, legal part. according to Trump. Farron, what do you think? Um, I, am I the only one that that is like super intrigued by the thought of, as Trump said, these unknown countries? With unknown language, I oh my God, let's let's go find the, these new lands that clearly have not been discovered <laughs> yet. That sounds very interesting to me. Let's keep filling in the map and find these places where these mystery people are coming from. But look, you said it. This is Trump's big issue, and a couple months ago, it was the number one issue for voters too. A new poll out this past week said actually the new number one concern of voters is the threat of political extremism. Immigration has now dropped down to the third biggest concern of voters. So Trump's got to ramp it up because if he doesn't have that enemy, just like he did in 2016, he's got to have the others. That's what it's always been with Republicans. The others are the reason your life is in the tubes. Hmm. These 
immigrants, you know, the people on welfare, the terrorists during the Bush years. It's always something that you have to be afraid of. And again, this group of people, whichever it is, the enemy of the day, they're also the reason why you're getting paid low wages. They're the reason why you can't find a job. They're the reason why the economy is in the toilet. They're the reason for all of the ills in your life. And elect me, and I'm gonna get rid of this group, and everything's yeah. gonna be great. And the next election cycle after voters fall for that, they're like, no, fool me once, not gonna happen again. And then four years later, they typically go back and do it again. 100%, and it's a great scheme too, because they elect a Republican who demonizes outgroups while passing economic policies that only benefit the already incredibly rich, which makes the conservatives that voted in those Republicans fall even further behind, which makes them even more desperate and in a well-established pattern, more susceptible to demonizing of outsiders. They're even more ready to turn their rage and you know fear over the future into hatred against people coming across the border. It's like it's a perfectly self-sustaining political economy for the right when it comes to elections.